So it's great to have the opportunity to briefly give you some highlights. I'm at the ALS MND International Meeting in Orlando and it's really so exciting. There are over 800 clinicians, scientists, um, the companies, all talking about the opportunities and the breakthroughs in ALS research and where things are heading. And I think in my mind the real highlights in the last few days, and we're obviously still in, in uh, the meeting is ongoing, the real highlight is uh, there's a very exciting new model for TDP43. Uh, Dr. Virginia Lee and her group um, described it and shows many of the features. We know that the mouse models are critical, although they have their limitations, they really uh, are very important for us to understand the biology and having more than just the SOD1 mouse model will give us an opportunity to test uh, treatment ideas and also the biology in multiple systems. Another very exciting presentation uh, today was looking much more closely at how uh, the disease is connected between F frontal temporal dementia and ALS and how the pathology varies. Um, this was very exciting and, and presented by uh, Dr. Seeley and Dr. John Ravitz who described how potentially the disease is spreading. The spread really, uh, Dr. Ravitz really described very carefully how the disease might be spreading, how it starts in one area and goes to the next and this ties in as well with the biology and how the cells might be uh, either secreting or the inflammatory cells are causing this disease to spread so it was really exciting to see how we think at it pathological level and at the cell biology level how the disease is spreading. As I mentioned, there are two tracks. There's the clinical side with report backs on, on uh, clinical management in the disease and also the opportunities in research. And in the clinical track, what is really exciting to see is that new Dexter, a compound that is used uh, in clinical uh, management of ALS for uh, the uh, pseudobulbar effect, the uh, laughing and the crying, um, that has now also been tested in a clinical trial sponsored by the ALS Association to see if the compound new Dexter might help for speech and swallowing. And the report from the meeting has shown quite positive results that in fact it can be beneficial at least in the patients that were tested, it's still a small study, that this might have a real impact for people that have bulbar ALS and difficulty in speech and swallowing. So very exciting feedback and report. Um, we're also excited to see the progress in C9. We have recently uh, put out releases on our website about uh, C9. A lot of data is being shared and importantly this will really all impact how we think about treating the disease and uh, some of the exciting um, ideas of how the uh, C9 is moving from the nucleus to the cytoplasm and how the export import might be affected has been very nicely described. Um, we're excited to see the progress in building model systems around C9 which are being very informative and then this morning we had an excellent presentation uh, really focusing on spinal muscular atrophy. This is a childhood uh, motor neuron dis disorder but in reality understanding these different diseases how they are progressing gives us real lessons for how we might envisage things moving forward for ALS and two technologies were described. The one that was carefully shared and very exciting to see the progress was antisense technology. This technology in fact was first described and first supported uh, in ALS and by the ALS Association and this technology now is moving quite rapidly forward uh, for not only ALS but the disease SMA and we saw the uh, clinical trials that have been uh, done in SMA, this childhood disease and how, what it's impacting and how it's moving forward. Alongside this presentation was an outstanding presentation by uh, Dr. Brian Casper and he described similar approach to downregulate uh, the uh, in this case in spinal muscular atrophy it's an upregulation of SMA but this was through a gene therapy approach and it was remarkable to see how successful this technology has been brought into these small uh, babies with SMA and the impact at least in the first part of the study that this might have these are lessons for us that this has real potential and is being developed for ALS as well. And so I think these encouraging presentations show us that we're getting closer and closer to potential treatments for ALS.